Hi everyone, welcome back to another WandaVision episode breakdown. This episode was fantastically sad. I mean, the episode made me cry several times every time I watched it. So let's relive this pain together. They started gutting us in the opening with the setup. They made us watch Vision die twice again. Then more of Wanda's origin in the MCU thus far. This is all a setup for this episode and this episode explores and explains how this hex was created and why. We have the Marvel logo that fades from red to purple which I think mimics the power control really going from Wanda to Agatha. Then Agatha's backstory. A young Agatha is a witch on trial in Salem. Salem is in this time period is obviously famous for the witch trials which is where I thought this was going but it did not actually go there. This ended up being a coven led by Agatha's mother Evanor Harkness. Agatha has been sentenced to death here and we know that because the Latin here translates to death to the monster of nature. In the comics, Agatha was also sent to death, but in a more traditional burning at the stake way. Witchcraft is heavily rooted in nature, and I think they are acknowledging that she has turned away from that and instead is practicing what her mother called the darkest of magic. This reminds me of Doctor Strange and the way that he advanced in his mystic training. However, Agatha seemed to use her learning of the dark arts for dark deeds. When the coven tries to punish her, she turns the spell on them, draining them of their power and life. Now that she's gained their power, she then turns on her mother. When her mother uses her power in its fullest, she has this magical crown. Crowns in witchcraft are typically given to a witch when she kind of comes into her own, but in this case, I think it signifies her as the leader of this coven and the most powerful witch. Of course, Agatha kills her, but that probably is because she was just juiced up on several other witches and practicing forbidden magic. After killing her mother, she takes the brooch which we have seen Agnes wear since episode 1. I think now that we have watched this more, the three figures featured are the Greek Fate Sisters. We have heard Destiny brought up to Wanda several times last episode, and then the Mind Stone shows her her fate later on in this episode, just like she was able to show Tony Stark his fate in Age of Ultron. But I'll get more to that in a minute. Since I'm a ticket holder for this Mephisto train, I guess I have to point out that in episode 1, Agatha mentioned that that her and her husband were married on June 2nd, which was the starting date of the Salem Witch Trials. Now we see Agatha being punished for practicing the darkest of magic toward the end of the witchcraft trials. I think it's likely that this marriage that she mentioned was an agreement or the selling of her soul to the devil Mephisto, and now she's being punished for that very thing. Back to where we left off in the episode, we are in Agatha's bewitched basement where we just learned so much information about Agatha and her intentions. I mentioned in my last video that bringing Senior Scratchy into this place was a purposeful choice and now it seems she's talking to him. And yes, this could be sarcasm, but I think she's actually talking to him. And let's be real, he ate the damn bug too. Wanda then attempts twice to use her magic on Agatha, but it doesn't work either time. The first is when she attempts to read her mind to get information or to mind control her, but like Agatha points out, Wanda was never able to peer into Agatha's mind like sh she was everyone else. This is why Agatha was not only able to slip into the hex undetected, but also why Billy couldn't hear her thoughts either. I imagine that she has some type of protection spell to stop that. The second time Wanda attempts to use her magic on Agatha, it is more aggressive but Agatha points out that because of the runes in her chamber she is not able to use magic here. It's magic 101 Wanda, come on. I think the rune shaped in the M might be a clue for House of M but more like a wink and a nod than actual real significance. Now it becomes clear to us that Agatha doesn't really know Wanda's powers and she's trying to figure out how she was able to make this hex happen. Agatha says that she felt the energy of the spells cast and until this moment she thought Wanda was hiding herself in the hex. But in reality, Wanda has no idea how her powers work or that she made this hex happen. Wanda doesn't even know she is a witch and is obviously untrained. She doesn't know anything about ruins nor does she understand the mind control or the transmutation spells that she's performed on the people of Westview. Wanda's true self is just a grieving woman with some powers. Okay, maybe that's an oversimplification. 
Agatha admits to Wanda that she brought in fake Pietro, or Fietro, if you will. She says that he is a crystalline possession, crystalline meaning clear or see-through, so literally she was looking through him, which means that she was also the one that confronted Monica outside. However, it isn't clear where his physical form came from. I think the casting of Evan Peters was just a fun jab at fans. They knew we would freak out and make wild theories. One thing is clear, Agatha is both impressed and annoyed. She's impressed because Wanda can create these illusions even miles away with elaborate storylines, and annoyed because she has no idea how she did it, no discipline or training. What Agatha wants now is to know how she can replicate this. This is what leads to the walk down memory lane, or what Agatha calls the real reruns. Agatha uses a piece of Wanda's hair to work the magic, much like Doctor Strange did in Thor Ragnarok when he was looking for Loki. Let's talk about the door first. There are nine circles, which could signify the nine levels of hell, the nine witches that tried to kill her. Nine has significance in Norse mythology with the nine realms. And then in medieval Germany, people believed that you could enter the realm of the Fae by twirling nine times. There's lots of magic rooted in the number nine. So it is a significant number. I don't exactly know what it means here. But they walk through the door and this scene, like all of Wanda's memories, are both pure and heartbreaking. We have Wanda at the age of 10 with her brother Pietro, her mother Irina, and her father Oleg. It becomes clear here in this memory and others just what a deep connection Wanda has to TV sitcoms. There was a love first brought to her by her father who seemingly smuggles illegal DVDs into a war torn Sokovia in the case here alone, we see the very DVDs that have inspired Wanda and her hex. From I Love Lucy to Bewitched to Adam's Family, Malcolm in the Middle. Of course, her most coveted being Dick Van Dyke's show, Where It All Started. The episode they watch here is one where Dick had a dream about aliens removing their thumbs so humans could not advance in technology. Can we get Skrulls to do that to Hayward, please? Which is exactly what I think this is referencing. We do have the moment where her mother takes note of the fighting outside, which was really a clue that bad shit was about to happen, plus we kind of already know what was going to happen. While Wanda and her family are enjoying their show, an explosion goes off, killing both her mother and father, leaving her and Pietro hiding under the bed when another bomb lands. This one being the bomb that she later blamed Tony Stark for in Age of Ultron because it had the Stark Industries plastered on the side. It is now very obvious that these commercials were just pointing out important events from Wanda's life because we again have the flashing red light like the commercial for the toaster. I know Pietro told the story in Age of Ultron that they were eating dinner, but I kind of can excuse that difference. The recollection of a severely traumatic event at the age of 10 may not be the best, so I guess that's a way you could explain it. But the big difference here to Wanda's origin is that it seems she used magic in order to decide the bomb, what Agatha calls a probability hex. This isn't a change from what her origin has been in the MCU thus far, because it isn't a detail that Wanda would have included because she herself didn't know she was a witch. It was told that she got her powers from the stone, and that's what she believed. But like many have speculated, they are just adjusting that slightly and making it so that the stone has unlocked something in her and compounding it with her witch abilities. I know people are saying that her story has been retconned, but it really hasn't. The details are just being filled in, and I think this is a fantastic execution of that. But Agatha needs to see more to find out what's really going on with Wanda, but for right now, we know that Wanda was a baby witch and has a love for sitcoms. Door number two was marked with the Hydra symbol, which was both in the watch commercial and the soap commercial. This takes us to the experiment with the scepter that we learned later contained the Mind Stone and brought her to the Avengers. According to the Hydra doctor and scientist, they have been testing to see what happens to people when they touch the scepter. In Guardians of the Galaxy, we saw what that did to Peter with the Power Stone, and he was part celestial. So this furthers the idea that she is special. The scene was absolutely gorgeous. Not only did we see the stone recognize her as a powerful being, but showed her destiny, like I mentioned earlier. We see in our vision that she is one day going to be a powerful witch just before passing out. And also, like I mentioned, we have seen this happen to Tony as well in the Age of Ultron, which led to him creating Ultron and then Vision. However, his true destiny was a snap that saved him from watching everyone else die. 
So Wanda's witch abilities are probability based and then the stone as in her mind powers like telepathy, mind control, and then later we learn her ability to create minds, but I'll get to that. When we see her again, she is back in the cell watching the Brady Bunch. The baby here is the same that we saw Vision with in the 70s episode as they were prepping for Wanda to deliver Tommy and Billy. The scientist and technician are analyzing the tape that seems to cut out when the real magic is happening, which is also what happens with the feed with sword every time wanda uses real magic it was cut from the feed maybe technology is incapable of recording real magic wanda and agatha then talk about what they just witnessed and agatha voice voices the idea that the infinity stone amplified something that was within her otherwise wouldn't have manifested i think this is going to lead us into the x gene because we know wanda was not the only one that received powers from touching the stone pietro the other person shared her dna however he was not as powerful as wanda because he was also not a witch agatha thinks she knows what's going on but she cannot connect quite all the dots yet so this takes them to the avengers compound in this scene, we really see where this deep love between Wanda and Vision began. I always felt they had a weird love story in the MCU, but this really made me understand what brought them together. Wanda explains to Agatha that this was her and Vision's first home together. She was lost after the death of her brother and being in another country and completely alone. And this is pre-Civil War before Wanda leaves the compound to join Captain America and the others. Then Vision literally and emotionally comes through her wall to offer her comfort as she watches Malcolm in the Middle. In this episode of Malcolm in the Middle, the dad is building this overhang that crashes down on him and Wanda explains to Vision that the man isn't really injured because it isn't that kind of show which makes you realize that these sitcoms were wanda's armor against getting hurt again they always have happy endings the one thing that she's truly desperate for wanda talks about her life as a tragedy because it is every time she gets on her feet she is knocked down again well vision explains that he doesn't know this kind of loss because he's never had a loved one for me the best line of this conversation was when he said to her but what is grief if not love persevering? From here, Agatha assumes that Wanda would have wanted to get Vision back, which takes us right into the scene with Sword, which played out very differently than Hayward showed us. Before we go through the door, I want to talk about how desperate Agatha feels here. Like she knows they're on the verge, but why does Agatha want to know? Why is Wanda bringing Vision back so important to her? Who does Agatha want to connect with? Yes, yes, I'm thinking her husband, Ralph, which I have already said, I think is Mephisto. To Sword. In this scene, we see that Wanda did not storm into Sword and take Vision's body. In fact, she was led in by Hayward after she arrived. She did go there to retrieve his body, but only because she wanted to give him a proper burial. Hayward then requests that she be allowed back. She walks through to his office without incident. Not only does he show her Vision, but it's clear that he's up to something. He does disrespectfully speak about Vision to Wanda, only acknowledging him as a machine instead of a once living being with a soul. He also tells her that they are going to do the ethical and legal thing, which is dismantling him. However, we know from the files that Darcy found that that's a straight out lie. He does bring up that she will want to bring him back online, then corrects himself to say back to life. Wanda makes it clear that that isn't her intention and would have no way to do that, or so she thinks. But it did plant a seed for Wanda. Like she said to Vision in the last scene, seeing Pietro would bring her comfort. Hayward's final say is that he cannot let her walk out of here with $3 billion in vibranium, only for her to bury it. He does, however, let her say goodbye. Wanda puts her hand on his head and realizes that the man she loves isn't in there and then she leaves. She specifically says, I can't feel you, which is how she's always described her ability to recognize Vision as more than a machine from all the way back to his birth in Age of Ultron. This is obviously all for show for Wanda's sake. Hayward and Sword have been experimenting on Vision for five years, as we learn in the credit scene. Hayward was hoping that Wanda would in some way be able to help them power Vision, but instead she left. I think this is why he eventually sends Monica to her. I also would be a very bad YouTube theory crafter if I didn't point out 
the hexagons. When Wanda leaves S.W.O.R.D., she heads to Westview, New Jersey with a letter. The town of Westview is quite different than what we have seen. It seems very run down, but I think this is really a result of the way the world is during these five years after Thanos' snap. Everything we've seen has been this kind of run down. There just wasn't the people to maintain this with half the world gone. There are some familiar faces and places, though. We have the gazebo, Herb, Miss Hart, and Phil Jones. I love that Phil was putting an ad for piano lessons since we've seen him playing piano in episode two. Man, Dennis is a, actually a pizza delivery driver. Wanda then pulls up to where we see the house that later becomes Agatha's. As Wanda gets out and looks around, she pulls out the page from the envelope to find Vision had purchased this with the intent that they would grow old here. In order for this to have happened, this would have had to have been pre-Infinity War when he bought this, so more than five years ago. The note was then outlined with a heart, like we've seen pop up in Easter eggs here and there specifically on calendars and then the coffee mug and on the chalkboard in the last title sequence. In her grief, Wanda then creates the hex, first building the house, then transforming the town, and then building a new vision straight from her heart. I do think it's interesting that all of her magic is red, but then the magic that le left her to create vision turned yellow, signifying that she was using her infinity-based mind stone to create vision from her memory of him. And this isn't just a projection. He is really here, or at least he's a real consciousness. He can think freely, but he can't leave the hex because Wanda cannot create a body for him. The town change was interesting. In the last video, I talk about the milk references and we see here there's a milk advert as well as one for Lagos paper towels and another snap. This goes on until everything, including Wanda, is in the Dick Van Dyke inspired episode one. I love that Vision's first words to her were Wanda, welcome home, because that truly is what she wanted, a life and a home with Vision. Once Wanda realizes that she's created this hex, she kind of sees the stage and her creation for what it is. And then Agatha, the lone audience member. Agatha then snaps herself out of the room and then Wanda hears Tommy and Billy screaming from outside. She runs out to find Agatha with strings around the boys. She says that now that she knows what Wanda is and that she's dangerous, she then says her best line yet. You are supposed to be a myth, a being capable of spontaneous creation, and here you are using it to make breakfast for dinner. Ah yes, your children and vision and this whole life you've made. This is chaos magic, Wanda, and that makes you the Scarlet Witch. Honestly, I about fell out of my chair. Not only are we finally calling her Scarlet Witch, but it also seems like she's some mythical prophesized being and her magic was specifically named chaos magic like from the comics. In the credit scene we see this weapon that Hayward and Sword have been creating. They just lack the power source to make it happen until Wanda's magic was preserved on the drone they sent in a few episodes ago. Then we see what they've powered up is a new white vision. This really blew my mind and is a direct pull from West Coast Avengers comic. There are a lot of speculation that this is Ultron and while I don't think this is actually Ultron, I do think Hayward is going to have the same issue the Avengers had in Ultron. If only there was a good conscious floating around out there. Hmm. But the spot on the head that would hold a Mind Stone now looks like a mini arc reactor, which makes you wonder why they wouldn't have the energy to bring this vision to life. It should have been more than efficient enough energy to run an AI program like Jarvis, but what was Hayward's goal if he needed that boost of Wanda's magic? I don't know. I guess we'll have to see. But this does set up the finale nicely. We have Wanda not only fighting Agatha and whatever she's up to, but then we also are going to have this big fight with Hayward and this new white vision. So I'm super excited and a little sad that next week is the final episode. Of course, I'm going to have a breakdown posted later next Friday for that finale. And then next Sunday, I'll do a video breakdown just like this. So I hope you guys subscribe to my channel so you can check that out. If you like reading about other shows, I do post daily on my blog at madeymaggie.com.